Well, it's wonderful to meet you. And thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Good to meet you. My pleasure. And uh, congratulations on the film. Um, I thought it was it was really fantastic. And uh, let's let's dive into this very interesting script. So I'm curious, um, you know, where did this kind of originate? Where did you get the idea for the listener? I don't even remember exactly the moment I started thinking about it, but it's a long time ago. Okay. I I was always uh, just very fascinated with the job of the headline operator. Generally speaking, I like movies that are about jobs. Okay. Mm. So The Messenger is another one, right? Which is about the specific job of casualty notifications. So if I find a job that is um, interesting, that hasn't really been dealt with uh, in uh, popular culture, um, and that has uh, sort of like, you know, built in. Uh, dramatic aspect i you, you know I, I can get quite excited about that so i always love the idea of this job and mm. and i and I, li I like the idea of making a movie about it because it is uh, obviously it's a makeable movie you know it's so contained with the version that we did is super contained it's just one of on camera um but it's also uh different it's, it's sort of counterintuitive because the whole point of the job is that it's not about her mm -hmm. right so you have a protagonist but uh, the protagonist is really not supposed to tell you you know what her deal is you know what, what, what her backstory is so that's not how movies typically work right typically you just know you know who is your hero what they want uh, what are you supposed to root for? What's the conflict? What's the problem? And here you have a character that is uh, um, mysterious, right? You don't know why she's doing this, what her problems are. So I think, I mean, to me, that's stimulating. That's exciting, right? It, it, it makes me think, okay, I can make a movie that is not like every other movie out there. Mm -hmm. So... That's been in my head for a long time, but I never really um, thought that I could write this movie because up until recently, and COVID was a big part of this, right? Helpline operators used to work in offices. So, um, you know, your protagonist would have been sitting in an office in, you know, in a cubicle in front of a computer screen for the whole time, right? And then if you make that movie, um, you, you're going to want to break out of there. You can't just be in that cubicle for 90 minutes. And then you have to have a thriller. Um, I don't know if you saw the movie, the, movie, the yeah. Guilty or something like that. Right? You have to build something that takes you out, but then it becomes a different movie, right? Mm -hmm. could be could be a great movie, but it's a different one. So... Yeah, with COVID, um, people started doing the job from home. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, so I can ever move around the apartment. I can have different rooms, different lighting. I can have, you know, some, some motion and texture that makes it, you know, visually engaging. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, sorry, long answer. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's perfect. So when you're writing something like this and you do have it so contained, do you think it's actually, do you find it easier to write a script in that context or hard or is it more challenging to write like a more contained environment? That's a very good question. I th and I think the answer is both. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it it's easier in the sense that you... You don't have um, you don't have to write action, so you don't have to you know choreograph the movie in your head in uh, in, in a very elaborate way. Uh, you don't have um, you know m multiple plot lines, uh, you know environments to juggle, and uh, you know I I like writing dialogue. So to yeah. me, that comes easy. Um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm an immigrant, right? So English is my second language. 
And for better or for worse, that made me a certain kind of writer. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good listener. I have to be a good listener. I had to be just to learn the language, right? So um, I, I hear hustle all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated with the way people talk. Yeah. And I and I enjoy writing dialogue, so that part is easy, easy yeah. sort of. But it is very hard, very hard to write a small movie because you only have sorry, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, you have to figure out ways to um, sustain the attention. Yeah you know, with limited resources. It's a little bit like making, you know, a dogma movie, right? You have these uh, built-in limitations that you have to work with. And it's so it's both easier and harder. It's both liberating and, um, you know, constricting. Yeah, that's very well put. And I think to be a good writer, you have to be a good listener in a lot of ways. Just uh... You do. You do. I always tell you know uh, if it, yeah when you know if people ask me you know, if the uh, younger people if they ask me oh you know how do I learn the craft what do I do yeah be a good listener. <laughs> That's good advice. Um, so it's interesting that you told you said that you are often fascinated by different jobs. Um, so I'm wondering did for this one did you do a lot of research? Did you speak with a lot of people that did work like this? Yes, I did. I did. Uh, I did uh, both um, interviews with people that do the job, um, and uh, a lot of reading, like everything that I, that I could read. So everything is uh, um, very grounded. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wanted it to be real. Now that's not to say that I didn't take some creative license. You you have to do that in a movie, but I really wanted to get the job right so the one thing that i can tell you that i'm you know that i'm very proud of is that the people who do this um have come to me and have, and have told me you know good job you mm -hmm. got it right there are i don't know i think 10 mental health uh, um, organizations na na national organizations that have officially you know endorsed the movie so um yeah that's that that was very important i think you know if you write something that is a genre you know fantasy whatever it doesn't matter right it, it, it doesn't matter you don't have to keep it real but on something like this i felt like i had to you had to get it right and that's that's amazing i'm sure that's very um wonderful to hear when people give that kind of support yeah yeah and so this seems like this has gone through some processes and you said it wouldn't have been made, you know, pre-pandemic this way. Was the script originally written differently and not? No, no, no. It, was, it was written during the pandemic, you know. Oh, it, oh so you wrote it during the, okay. the character was, was in my head for a long time, but mm -hmm. I just didn't know how to do it in, in an office setting. So I never, right. I never even tried. The so one during... positive came from <laughs> the well, I think it's more, yes. I think that um, made it technically possible, right? Right. Um, I thought, okay, she's working from home. Great. I can see that. Yeah. It also made it the rare kind of movie that could be done yeah. um, during the pandemic because we only needed a small crew for a week and one actor, right? So we actually, you know, could do it. And, and lastly, I think, uh, you know, because of the pandemic, the whole idea became more relatable. Yeah. Everybody was, uh, you know, going through some crisis, you know, and an intense uh, isolation and loneliness. So the idea became, I think, more more, more urgent. Yeah. Um, and people, I think, started realizing that um, helpline operators are part of, uh, um, you know, this vast uh, category of you know essential workers that mm -hmm. we take for granted yep. and we shouldn't and we shouldn't right nurses and you know 
drivers and caregivers, uh, you know, the, the, all, all these people during the pandemic we realized, oh, you know, actually we really cannot have a society without yeah. it. And they're dealing with their own things as well, you know, right. and sometimes people, I think, forget that. Um, so what was it like collaborating with uh, Steve Buscemi and working on him with us? Great, great. Steve Steve was, uh, you know, a, a, a prince. I, I, um, I knew him since The Messenger because, you know, he, he, he had a role in that. And Oren Moverman, who um, did The Messenger with me, directed it. He is an old friend, so he, Oren is a producer on The Listener. And uh, Steve was the first director that we thought to give it to. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really, really happy to work with him because the, the, the film is an acting tour de force. So, you know, we always thought, wouldn't it be great to have a great actor, you know, directing this movie because he's going to get the performance, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's like, you know, 90% of the movie, right? Um, and also Steve is, uh, you know, he's, he's not, uh, you know, fresh out of college, right? That, you know, there are a lot of great, uh, you know, exciting filmmakers that have, uh, you know, um, all kinds of, you know, in innovative technical skills, but maybe they don't have, you know, the life experience, mm -hmm. right? And I think this movie needed that as well. You know, it needed someone with some life mileage. Um, so, you know, Steve came in, Steve like immediately responded to the material. He, you know, he, he had not directed a movie in like a, in a long time. He's, and not for lack of options, he's, he's just picky. So, <laughs> Um, you know, we didn't know how I was going to react, but he immediately said, I mean, what about Tessa Thompson? You know, I, oh, met, wow. I met her recently. Wait. She just came came to mind. We're like, yeah, of course. We, you know, we, we would probably never get her because you never get your first choice. But let's, let's try it. And then Tessa said yes, uh, you know, overnight, just like Steve. Um, so, you know, the, the, the whole movie was, uh, you know, a very kind of joyful, collaborative experience, despite the fact that we shot it, you know, during COVID. So we went on this set, a small set, super hot, middle of summer, you know, with masks. So, you know, it should have been miserable, but it wasn't. It was actually, you know. It yeah, be, yeah, just a great experience. Well, it sounds like you kind of got the dream team there, um, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, you know, it's on a movie like this. It's, uh, it's yeah, you know, you don't do it for the money, so it, it's it, it's important to have people that that have uh, that share the same vision. Yeah, absolutely. And Tessa Thompson is fantastic, and she's she's really really good. And like you said, you know, the acting is such a big part of this film. So it's crucial that you get someone that's, you know, going to be able to carry that. And it's interesting that uh, he actually said her name. Um, yeah. Did you have some, like, when you write a script, do you kind of cast in your mind sometimes as like a dream star? I'm just curious when you write it, if you do. Yeah, I, I often do. And uh... And it's not necessarily the actor that I would then try to get. Right. Um, sometimes it's, it's just an actor that kind of allows me to visualize the character. And I already know that, you know, they, they're probably ungettable because they're super busy or they've done something, you know, similar in the past. So it doesn't have to be the, the target. Yeah. You know, the, you've read it for it's just the inspiration yeah no that makes perfect sense to be um, from the past you know right um so i won't take much more of your time up but um did you work with tessa at all to kind of develop you know like during the process of this like talk about the character talk about what you had learned and collaborated a little bit on her character very little um uh, because she once she said yes um you know, 
we, we just had to wait for her to be actually available because she was doing Thor and Westworld and yeah. uh, Creed, busy. So, like giant movies and TV shows. So it took about a year for her to actually have a window. Mm. And then and then she called, uh, she said, you know, Westworld is on uh, Ayeros. I have a week, uh, you know, how about making this movie? And we're like, yeah, great. <laughs> when? So, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, in 20 days. <laughs> so, so the whole thing came together very quickly. And uh, I had, a, you know, I had a couple of chats with her. Um, and, uh, you know, she did her own, her own homework to familiarize herself with, you know, with the character, with the job. Uh, but, uh, you know, the script uh, didn't really change. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, her interpretation of the character. You yeah. know, she, she brought her own, her own emotional intelligence to it. Um, right. Yeah, and I see, you know, I, I could not be happy with her performance. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today. Congrats again on the film. It's a it's really wonderful piece of work, very well written. And I look forward to seeing what you have to do next, what you're coming out with next. Thank you so much.